Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at short circuit evaluation. This is something that's done in some languages, not done in others. Java is a language that does do it. Here's the basics. In this if statement here, I have a condition and another condition that have to be true. Now, because it's an and, both conditions have to be true. If this condition is false, I know we're not going to be able to be printing out great, because once you hit one false here, you know overall it's going to evaluate the false. So short circuit evaluation just means it sort of takes the short route. As soon as it finds a false, it doesn't bother checking the rest of the AND statement, and that's short circuit evaluation. So you can see here, I'm doing a little divide by zero, right? So let's say I turn this to zero in my statement. Well, if it did the entire statement, it would say if not equal to zero, and that would be false, and a divided by, so 19 divided by zero, would create a divide by zero error. But because I have this part first, if this is false, it won't even bother checking the rest, making it impossible to get the divide by zero error. So maybe one little benefit, right, to using this. Now, the short circuit evaluation is just something that happens. It really is the equivalent of just writing this. I mean, it's just like a nested if statement, right, where I ask this first. Then, if it's true, I could go in there. These two are basically equivalent, right? They do the same thing. But obviously, this way just sort of looks better. It's cleaner. And you want to put your most important or maybe the critical condition first. And that way, if it's false, it doesn't waste time going on to the others. Sort of like this one here. Let's say uh, my most important condition here, the one that's going to really determine most of the time whether this runs or not, is A greater than B. I can put that out in front. If A isn't greater than B, this will be false. It won't even bother checking the rest of the conditions. Okay, So that's short circuit evaluation. Um, another time where it can be useful is you'll see here I have a little method in my class called get point. It sends back a Java point object. Sometimes it sends this one back, but sometimes it sends null back. So I don't know what it's going to give me. It could give me a point. It could give me null. When I go back down here and use it, I say, hey, point, set yourself equal to short circuit class. Get me a point. Maybe it's null, maybe it isn't. So I could set up my statement like this. If point is not null and the x value and the y value of the point are the same, I print out same x and y. This is a nice little safety check. I don't want to do this if point was null. So here's my little check for point is not null. If this is true, then it continues on to do this check here. So it can save you a little time, make your code a little cleaner. Um, like I said, you can just do it by having nested if statements anyways, but it's a nice little feature of the language you should be aware of. Notice here with arrays, it can be nice and tidy for doing your checks with indexes. If the index is under the length and the index is zero or higher, then I can check if that index position is the search value. This index value has passed the within bounds test, so this statement will not be checked unless the index is good valid spot within the bounds of the array. So this is where you see it happening. Uh, if it fails, it doesn't bother checking this, so you won't get an index out of bounds there ever with this code. Anyways, that's the basics on short circuit evaluation. Uh, you can go read more about it if you want, uh, but that's the basics.